All right, for YouTube purposes, this is a fake knife. It is dull. We are being safe. Hello, goblins, my creative goblins. Today, we're going to be talking about developing magic systems. Quick disclaimer, I'm not some veteran expert. I'm putting out my first novella this month. Pre-order in the links down below. I'll always be plugging. Thank you, Jarvis. But I cannot claim to be some expert on the topic. But what I do bring to the table is a lot of experience talking to authors about how they develop their magic systems. I have two magic systems in my world that I'm pretty confident in. I don't love every element of my book, but I think I did a pretty darn good job of developing the magic systems. I hope it doesn't come across cocky. I just, I like them. I think they're pretty good and I've gotten positive feedback. One is harder, the Groholand, and one is softer, the Anointed. We're going to be going over how I developed each, and I have some general advice as well for just crafting and better fleshing out your magic systems from concept to actual writing, because there can be some real stumbles you hit down the road if you do not really think through every element and angle of the magic system you are are going with. You don't want to run into some Harry Potter level problems where people are going like, hey, um, didn't you have time? To, couldn't you just fix? Uh, that would have been... You don't want that. But first, let's go ahead and talk about conceptualizing a magic system and getting it out of your brain hole and into the pages because this is kind of the biggest wall people run into, right? Like you can't think of a magic system that feels authentically you and original. Like it's like you're, oh, you're writing it. You're like, oh, this seems, oh, damn it. I just made Alamancy. Like you want something that's going to stand out and really be reflective in a way of the story you're telling. It's nice to have a magic system that blends well with the atmosphere and the characters. Well, I have two magic systems I'm working with and I can tell you directly where I drew inspiration for each. The Groholand, I was watching the show Chernobyl and I saw the terrible, horrific side effects of radio radiation poisoning and I went, that would be pretty awesome ramifications for a magic system, a harder one that needs limits. Awesome. And I knew I wanted some kind of telekinetic magic system that was harder because I hadn't really seen that before. And I wanted something that was a really energy based telekinetic magic system that had really harsh ramifications. So it fit like a glove and then I took creative liberties and now we have the Groholand and there's a few like layered little things in there that are making it not quite so hard, but like it's good. And we'll get into that as the stories get revealed. Next novella should be out by the end of the year. I'll always be plugging. Now for the softer magic system, I just went straight up with my passion for Greek mythology and history and actually comic book heroes. I looked at the demigods and blessed heroes from these ancient tales and I went, that's kind of nice. What if we sprinkled some X-Men in there and then we made it pretty messed up when you learned the truth behind some things? And I was like, okay this works, this is nice. And so the commonality there is I pulled from things that I'm inherently interested in, history and science. And I got to actually enjoy writing them more because I got to do research into things I liked. And I recommend you do the same. If you have passions, if you have things you already care about, that's free real estate. That's stuff you're already knowledgeable in. And the more knowledgeable you are in the subject that inspires your magic system, I guarantee you your magic system will benefit as a result. And this doesn't have to be the case every time, but for a first magic system, it's going to be like writing on easy mode, which will build your confidence for any other magic systems you write down the road. So just look at things you genuinely care about. Even if it's other fantasy stories, it's okay to look at Lord of the Rings magic system, find like an element to it, and then just leap off from there and craft something that is your own. It's fine to draw inspiration in that sense. Say it with me. You do not have to write the next Allomancy. You have to write the magic system that fits your story. And that's all that's really important. So if you really dig Avatar, watch a few episodes and let your mind just wonder about possibilities for the bending there. And I promise you, you can end up with something completely different. I actually had a whole other magic system originally in my story. I ended up removing because I thought three would be too much, but it was actually inspired by bending. But by the time my mind was done wondering, it was more of like this spirit based control that's gone now, but it was so useful to watch something that was already so clearly developed and just let that structure transmit over and then you fundamentally rebuild it from the ground up. That's absolutely okay. It's just drawing inspiration. You're not ripping anyone off. That's fine as long as the end product is different enough. So if you love football, go watch some football. If you love history, go watch a documentary. That's going to be seeds for you to grow a plant from. Okay, so you have your concept though. But how are you gonna really flesh it out and make it feel real? Think it through so you don't have problems in the writing process that you run into and you go, that breaks the entire story. Why didn't Hermione just use the time turner and just fix all the things? Just go back and kill like Voldemort and he's a baby. Why didn't you do that? You just hook it up to a thing that auto winds it. Just go back and hit Voldemort's in a crib. Pop! 
it, all these problems. Why wouldn't you do that? Well, my first piece of advice there is don't introduce time travel unless absolutely necessary because that is just a messy thing to get on into. But asterisk to this next point, if you're going with a softer magic system and you don't care about, you know, rules that are always going to be there and it's more about the whimsy and the spirit of the story, it's all right to have something that people can poke holes into because that's not the point. So despite what diehard hard magic system fans might tell you, your magic system doesn't have to be all logical and completely makes sense. This is magic and we're in fantasy. Yet, if you do really want to have something that's fleshed out and thought through, something that was really beneficial for me actually able to write small scenes that I think added a lot to the depth and the immersion of the magic, was to have a few days where I walked about doing my daily thing, you know, going out in the city, shopping, things like this, and just continually every minute or so think, okay, how could I possibly implement the magic if I had it right now? And obviously most of the time it was not really doable, but there were certainly a few moments where it was like, wow, in traffic, I could do that and it would solve a huge issue, get me there way faster, and I wouldn't have thought of that otherwise. So basically as a writer, as a creative, go into the world. Don't just sit in front of your laptop trying to think of creative usages of your magic. Hell, go to a park. You look at what other people are doing even. Don't be creepy. Don't, don't be too, don't, don't stare. You, you do like the, don't, don't go. That's bad. That's very bad. And just wonder where your magic system could come into play. And then once you've done that, try to do it from another perspective from your own. So you're watching other people, right? You're seeing how you could implement it in their life. Try to find specific jobs that are like, you know, positions in society. Think of like, okay, how in the military would this be used? How would a priest use it? How would a teacher? Think of these angles and maybe there's nothing. You know, if you have something that's very combat oriented, I doubt a teacher could use it. I, I hope not, but that could lead you into thinking, well, okay, how would they teach this magic system? And think about how dangerous it could be to teach. What measures would they put in place to try and keep safety for the instruction going on? Those are all things that before you start intricately writing scenes with your magic system, I believe you need to have figured out if you're going especially the harder route. Because if your magic system is like explosion based and your people are just like out there throwing it around, as a reader, I'm gonna be thinking, how in the world was this ever safely taught? How could people possibly be like in a classroom setting learning this? So is this something that people innately do and it's natural and it wasn't taught to them? Okay, how'd they not accidentally blow themselves up? Is there a healing factor? You need to have all those processes. So before you get into these intricate, intimate scenes, take a few moments to really go from like the whole life cycle of your magic system, from figuring out you can do it, to being taught it, to being a capable user, to maybe experiencing some ramifications. What happens in the older life once you're physically weak? Does that make it harder to use? This whole life cycle, make a circle, make a literal circle, get, grab a pad, do it right now, make an actual circle and have birth to death and think of how the different stages of life or your learning of it could be affected throughout your own actual life. It's, it's very important and again will give you creative inspiration for characters, plot beats, elements you can introduce in the story that will make it all feel more rich and vibrant. I especially love this idea that I don't know if it's already a thing out there or if it's called something else, but I call it the death cycles of a magic system. Once someone has been in it for a long time, I love ramifications of that. That's why radiation poisoning is my inspiration for Groholand. I do not want these teleconnect people to be in their 90s still able to do the stuff they're doing. No, your average user of a Groholand does not have that long of a life expectancy because they're poisoning themselves. And so I have a circle that is drawn out of how quickly this can come to end their life, especially ones that are out in the battlefield using it excessively. You can kill yourself in a day that way with the Groholand. And you best believe that means it ended up being where it's like, oh, the people who use this power, they need to be bulkier and bigger because it actually helps them absorb more of the poison. They wear certain kinds of armor to stop the environment they're poisoning around them to actually poison them more. There's this vicious cycle that way. And if you do make it to an older age as a Groholand, there's like insane levels of respect and it's always the smarter people who are able to implement the magic better than those who just go from the more brute force approach. Those who are older are usually very agile with it. None of that I would have been able to come up with if I didn't sit down and think the full life cycle of the magic system through. That's so important. It's the best piece of advice I can give you, mainly for harder magic systems. Now though, I wanna talk about that softer magic system, the anointed. For me, it's very X-Men-esque in a way. It's literally being blessed with abilities by a god. The advice I can give you here though with softer magic systems is you are 
given the longest leash and usually the most just like creative freedom and liberty from readers with softer magic systems. You can just kind of run with it and most people are gonna be really okay with that. What I've found though, is unless you're going with absurdism, which is, you know, like just going totally balls off the wall, magic does whatever. It's still important with soft magic systems to have some rules, to have some well-defined limitations. It's like watching children play, right? That's the metaphor I have for developing a capable and well-rounded soft magic system in my head. They're kind of chaotic and they'll surprise you with what they do and the directions they go in, but they still usually have like some structure to their play. And that's what actually allows them to have the most fun. If you just throw a bunch of kids in like a square and you're like, go, they're gonna be like, I don't, what? But if you throw a ball in there and you say, hey, going out of these lines is out of bounds and you lose, they'll figure it out and they'll have a blast. That's to me the highest functioning softer magic systems. So for these people who are given gifts by gods, each one of them I defined rough barriers for, where they can't go past these limits, or they have these specialized powers and there's some you know ramifications. Like, oh, if this person could throw fire, but you know he's still vulnerable to flame damage from his arm up because it's limited to his arm down where he can cast it from, there's still some understanding. And you can also have hard magic systems within softer magic. That's a whole other video for like another day. So those are like the biggest piece of advice that I can give you. If you're gonna go hard, get a whole life cycle in there. Really think about the learning, the education, really like a life all the way to death if you wanna have some kind of ramification in there. And for the softer ones, let it be chaos in a way, but add some limits and be very careful about what elements you introduce that could be world breaking. For example, stay the f away from time travel. Enough green screen shenanigans. Let's go ahead and boil this down to a very achievable list of steps that I recommend that worked for me. And I recommend you alter to better suit yourself and your creative process. But this could be a good place for you to start. One conceptualizing. As I said, looking into things you already know you're passionate about will often be a great source of inspiration. Just look to something where you're like, yeah, I, I really like oceans and waves and start looking into it. Hell, just tides I'm sure can be a great inspiration for some kind of magic system. Once you have some kind of structure in place, let's say it's some kind of water moisture related magic system, then go out into the world, experience a day in the life of you, and just continually remind yourself to think about how you could utilize this magic system, whether it's hard or soft. Not only will this give you a more well-rounded view of what you're trying to create, but it's a solid place to come up with inspiration for story beats. Then look at jobs, okay? Other jobs you know will be in your world. How could it affect those if the magic system permeates society? Now we deviate based on hard and soft quite a bit. If it's a harder magic system, you need to come up with those limitations and consequences and rules. Structure them well and again, think them through. Maybe go through your day again thinking about these rules. How it will it actually limit and affect those jobs you thought about? Those rules hang on everything. Don't break these rules in your story. That's how you piss off your readers and ruin stakes. For softer magic systems, don't think of it as rules. Think of boundaries. Think of, okay, yeah, this is what the magic system does and it can do a lot. It's pretty wiggly, wiggly, woggly, but I'm still going to have these areas of guiding the stream of what it can do. It's not a hard wall, but it's a direction. That's still important so that you can have stakes. You do not want a magic system unless you're just going absurd that can solve all problems, no question. And then again, walk through your day with those boundaries and constantly take notes. I have pages on pages on pages of notes for both my magic magic systems, for just little ideas, nuggets, just concepts of, oh yeah, that would lead to this, which might lead to why, and that completely changes how transportation could work in this world. And then you can have world building inspiration for both hard and soft magic systems of fundamentally changing economics, which can, which if you're going for a big epic fantasy world is the kind of stuff that those nerds are going to eat on up. Trust me, I know. Not everyone's taste is going to align to mine. But one of the things I find very uh, universal with fans of magic systems is them being implemented and ingrained in the world effectively and believably. And what I've outlined here, this kind of day in the life approach is gonna give you so much bread to work with in terms of ingraining your magic system. But Daniel, you're forgetting an oh so crucial step. What about tying your magic system into the lore? Tying it in the world is just fine, but there's still the lore. Well, that's a video for another day.
Look forward to that next week. But anyway, guys, this is just my thoughts on how to better flesh out and well-round magic systems within your worlds. And I'd love your feedback of any tips and tricks you have in the comments down below. I'm sure there's gonna be some people looking there for additional things and people who disagree with me and have whole other approaches to writing magic. And I wanna hear from you. So let me know, give me those comments, give me those likes if you don't mind. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here and check out my book Breach of Peace if either of those magic systems interested you. Always be plugging. Peace.